Now let's take a quick overview of the different sections of the DPO. As we already know, it's a two oscillator module. The two oscillators are kind of physically delineated with controls for oscillator A on the left here and controls for oscillator B on the right here. So clearly there's a lot more that can be done with oscillator B. The two oscillators have three waveform outputs each, triangle, sawtooth and sine for oscillator A, sine, square and a final out for oscillator B. The final waveform is the West Coast style oscillator shape, which has a whole bunch of wave shaping options on the right here. Now the two oscillators have dedicated pitch control dials and also a smaller fine-tuned control for each. This is the beat frequency LED which shows the difference in phase of the two oscillators. Very helpful when you're trying to tune the two oscillators to the same pitch. At the bottom you have the standard 1 volt per octave CV controls for each oscillator. So connect the pitch CV of your keyboard here to play the oscillator or plug the pitch CV from a sequencer here to create melodic patterns. There's this interesting follow feature which can make oscillator A track oscillator B's pitch. You can get some interesting glide style effects or even just use it to make sure the two oscillators pitch are just better in sync. Keep in mind this is not the hard sync concept which is implemented separately. There's also a CV input to externally control the follow amount. For example, if you send an LFO signal here, you can have the follow increase and decrease based on the shape and rate of the LFO. VCO A has three additional modes it can be set to. Lock creates a soft sync to oscillator B. Sync creates the classic hard sync to oscillator B. And then LFO sets VCO A to LFO mode. There's some pretty insane FM capabilities built into the synth. VCO A can be frequency modulated by VCO B sine wave in a linear FM mode or exponential FM mode. You get a FM index style for both. And the cool thing is that you can have both FM index styles up for some really intense FM madness. VCO B has the exact same options, except that it gets frequency modulated by the sine wave from oscillator A. The CV jacks linked to each linear and exponential dial can be used to override the default input for the FM. So for example, you can send an LFO signal here to get a much slower pitch modulation effect. Now none of this FM stuff is going to work unless this blue FM bus index dial is up. Think of this as a master depth control for all the FM that happens. You can also choose to CV control this with an external signal. This white dial here is an attenuverter, which can be used to attenuate the external signal and even invert it. Now we already know oscillator A has the three modes. Oscillator B does not have that, but there is a signal input for soft sync with the X lock jack here. So you can take any waveform out from oscillator A, plug that here to get a soft sync sound. All right, now everything else here on the right is relating to the final out on oscillator B. This is where the West Coast style synthesis comes into play. You get three controls to tonally shape the sound of the final waveform, shape, angle, and fold. We will look at all three controls in detail later on. The blue dials on each section controls the various shaping options. The white dials in each section is to control the amount of modulation of those parameters. By default, Oscillator A's sine wave is normaled to modulate the controls, but you can plug an external signal in the jacks here to override that oscillator A sine signal. Now just like the FM section, you have a mod bus here, which controls the master modulation amount. It too has an attenuverter. So if you want modulation of any of the three sections, shape, angle, or fold, then you have to have this blue dial up. Think of it like a master modulation depth for all those three sections. Now even that can be modulated with the attenuverter below and whatever signal is input to the index jack. By default, it uses the sign out from oscillator A as the source to modulate the three sections, but you can insert any signal into the external source jack to override that. Okay, so that's a quick overview of the different sections of this module. Now if this didn't quite sink in yet, just watch the video a second time before moving along. Trust me, it will help and the rest of the course will be a lot easier to digest. Okay, if you're comfortable with this basic overview, see me in the next tutorial where we will start to look at the waveform outputs.